So in this lesson, we're talking about what it means to divide by fractions that are non-unit fractions. That is, fractions that do not have a 1 for their numerator. Unit fractions are fractions such as 1 half, 1 third, 1 twelfth. And now we're talking about fractions such as 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 11 twentieths. Fractions that do not have 1 as their numerator, and so require a little bit of extra thought and extra consideration when we're dividing by them. But let's start with a review of what it means to divide by a unit fraction. In this case, we have to remember that we're talking about division in terms of splitting one whole set. Now it can be a whole set of numbers, it can be a mixed number, but whatever that set is, we're splitting it into equal groups of a certain amount. So in this case, if we have one chocolate cake, we want to split one chocolate cake into equal groups of a third of a cake each. In this case, we know that one is the same as three thirds. And we can split this cake, um, not in any particular beautiful drawing order, but we can split it into thirds. That one cake split into thirds now shows that we have one, two, three-thirds per cake. Therefore, the number of thirds that are in one whole cake is equal to three. Or, we have one cake and there are three-thirds per cake. Now, if we had three cakes divided into thirds, we could use the same logic. We're going to split each of these cakes into thirds. Again, with my not-so-fantastic um, or accurate drawing, but it will it will do the trick. So in each of these cakes, we have one, two, three thirds here. We have a fourth, fifth, and sixth, and then seven, eight, and nine. So in that case, we can see that three divided by one third, the number of thirds of a cake that are present in three cakes is equal to nine. Alternatively, in each of those one cakes, there are three thirds. So in three cakes, there are three times the number of thirds in one cake, which is three, and that also gives us nine. As part of this, it's important to remember that one itself, as a unit fraction, can be one over one, but it can also be represented as two halves, three thirds, four fourths, five fifths, etc., and on and on and on, because it represents one whole. Whatever the denominator is, in order to have a fraction that is equal to one, you have to have an equal number in the numerator. Nineteen nineteenths. If we're talking about nineteen equal parts of something, and we uh, are looking at all nineteen of those equal parts, then we'll have a fraction that's equal to one, because we're looking at the entire whole. And this idea is very important for looking at what it means to divide fractions. So now let's switch gears from pies to pizzas. And now what if we don't have a unit fraction? Now we have four divided into equal sets of four fifths. Now we've already divided our pizzas into fifths, each of our four pizzas written here. So now let's go ahead and circle or fill in in different colors each of the sections of four fifths. Because remember, four divided by four fifths really represents the question, how many groups of four fifths are there in four whole pizzas in this case? So my one group of four fifths is here, and it's outlined in purple. That's one. The next group, let's outline in red. We have one fifth here, and now we need to take an extra three fifths from this group. So this is our second group. That's two. Again, we have two fifths here, so we need to borrow two fifths from this other group here. That is still four fifths. That is group three. Group four, we have three fourths, excuse me, uh, three fifths on this pizza, so we only need to borrow one fifth from the next. That is our fourth group of four fifths. And we have four fifths left over here, colored in yellow. That is our fifth group. So we can see that four divided by four fifths has got to be five, because in four whole pizzas, there are five equal groups of four fifths of a pizza. And so now let's think about what that means in terms of the actual division, because we're not going to be able to go through and count with every single division problem we arrive at. So think, how many fifths do I have in total? Because I've got to split it into fifths. And then, how many equal groups will I have if I split all of those fifths into equal groups of four? And in order to do that, we have to understand that four fifths, as an idea, 
is just the same as four fifths. So if we look back at our uh, purple group, the first group that we said, of four fifths, we can see there are four fifths of a pizza here. And how did we find that? Well, we took one fifth of a pizza and then we added another and another and another until it became a group of four fifths of a pizza. And that fraction, four fifths, is just four fifths. So if we think about it that way and we understand that as what we're talking about, let's look at how many fifths we have in total. Now I'm going to keep track of this in a few different mathematical ways down the side here. But let's look at this. If we have four pizzas and we want to split it into fifths, well, we'll say four divided by one fifth. Why? Because that will split our four pizzas into equal groups of fifths. We know that we do that by multiplying four by five because in each of one pizza there are five fifths. So in four pizzas there are four times five or twenty fifths. Now we want to group each of those fifths into groups of four. So we have 20 fifths to begin with because that is four times five. We are taking our 20 slices of pizza and grouping them into groups of four. Now if we just asked with 20 slices of pizza, we were going to group them into groups of four, how many groups do we have? We would use the operation 20 divided into groups of four is equal to five. So we are going to do the same thing here. Dividing something into equal groups is division. That is one of the things that division means. So if now we are dividing 4 into 4 fifths, we're going to find all the fifths that there are in 4 and divide all of those fifths into equal groups of 4. So we're going to divide the number of fifths by 4. And now take a look at these two fractions, 4 fifths and 5 fourths. You'll notice that their numerator and denominator are switched and that for multiplication and division we have switched our operation similar to the way that we had before when we were dividing by unit fractions. So 4 divided by 4 fifths is the same as 4 times 5 fourths. Let's look at another example of that to make sure that that gets through. What if we don't have a unit fraction and we're dividing our four pizzas into equal groups of three-eighths of a pizza? Well, think again. How many eighths do I have in total? Well, we know that in any one pizza, there are eight eighths. So in four pizzas, there are four times eight, or 32 eighths. And now what will happen if I divide those eighths into equal groups of three. Well, we have 32 eighths. Divide them into equal groups of three means just divide 32 by three. Now in this case, we don't have an equal number. And we can go through, um, if you want, you can pause the video, draw out your four pizzas and separate them each into groups of three eighths and see exactly how many you have. We're not gonna do this on the video here. We're gonna go straight to the next slide and do the same thing that we did before. Our four pizzas divided into eighths of a pizza first. Well, we know that that is four times eight eighths of a pizza, because in each of one pizza there are eight eighths. Now I'm going to split those eighths into groups of three, which means my total number of eighths is now going to be divided by three. We're not going to have an equal group, because 32 isn't divisible by three, but we still have this fact. That to take four divided by three eighths, we have actually inverted the fraction, changed the numerator and the denominator, and switched them and made it into multiplication. And in general, that is the rule for how we divide by fractions or mixed numbers. We change them to improper fractions. To divide a number by a fraction, you multiply by what's called the reciprocal. And the reciprocal of the fraction is what you get when you switch the numerator and the denominator. So the reciprocal of 3 fourths is what we get when we switch numerator and denominator. 4 becomes the numerator. 3 becomes the denominator, and this is the reciprocal of 3 fourths. This process, switching the numerator and denominator, is also called inverting the fraction. So you can call it either finding the reciprocal or inverting the fraction. And then let's take a look at that in a specific example. 17 over 20 divided by 3 fourths. Now if we remember what our rule is for dividing by fractions, we need to change the, the division to a multiplication, keep the 17 twentieths the same, because this is still the same amount that we're splitting up into equal groups of 3 fourths, and invert 3 fourths to its reciprocal. So it now becomes times 4 thirds. Denominator to numerator, numerator to denominator. 
And now, as we said in previous lessons too, we can do some immediate canceling to make this a bit of an easier multiplication to do. If we don't do the canceling, we end up with 68 60ths. If we do do the canceling, we end up with the simplified form of 68 60ths, which is 17 fifteenths. There are three letters we can use to talk about what we've done here. The first fraction, we keep the same. So we're going to call that K for keep. We have now changed the operation from division to multiplication. So we'll call that C, change. And we have inverted the fraction. We have found its reciprocal. We have flipped the numerator and denominator. So now F for flip. Keep, change, flip. So take a second to look at each of these practice problems. Pause the video, come back, and we'll, we will go over the answers and review how to do them when you're back. So keeping in mind that our three letters that we need to remember are keep, change, flip. 7 eighths divided by 3 twentieths in the upper left hand corner. Well that's keep the 7 eighths, change to multiplication, and multiply by 20 thirds. If we want to simplify it now, which I'm going to, the 8 divided by 4 is 2, the 20 divided by 4 is 5, 7 times 5 is 35, 2 times 3 is 6, 35 6 is our answer. If we want to change that to a mixed number, it is 5 and 5 6. In the upper right hand corner, we have 1 half divided by 3 20 ths now, changing the position of the unit fraction. So we're not going to change the 1 half to a 2 like we did before. We're going to keep the 1 half. We're going to change the operation to multiplication, and we're going to flip the second fraction. 3 20 ths becomes 20 thirds. Again, Canceling, 20 divided by 2 is 10, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and we end up with an answer of 10 times 1 is 10, over 3 times 1 is 3, or 10 thirds. Now looking down at the examples in the bottom left, in the bottom right hand corner, we have some mixed numbers. And we know from multiplying fractions that any mixed numbers need to be changed to improper fractions in order to multiply correctly. And since division, once we keep change flip based on all those examples that we have done before describing why we keep change flip we're going to end up with a multiplication so we need to convert the improper fractions to mix no uh, excuse me the mixed numbers to improper fractions 10 thirds times 9 sevenths cancel out becomes 30 sevenths and finally for the last one 12 fifths divided by 4 thirds, which is times 3 fourths. Cancel out this is a 3 and a 1, and we finally get 9 fifths. So one more time, our three letters are keep, change, flip. To divide a number by a fraction, you keep that first number, which is the number that we're separating into groups. You multiply now, instead of divide, by the reciprocal of the fraction or mixed number that you're dividing by. And to find the reciprocal, we simply change the numerator and denominator and switch their places. We invert the fraction. Keep, change, flip.